sorry about the microphones again, everybody. <clears throat> Let's pray. Father, thank you for your goodness towards us. Thank you for your saving grace in the risen Jesus Christ. I pray that you would uh, pray that you would bless our time. You would help us to um, understand who you are, follow Jesus Christ with all our hearts. We pray that even by your Spirit, you will be at work in our midst even now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So happy Easter, everybody! Anyone get, anyone get Easter eggs? Not yet. Okay, some of you are waiting. Some of you are waiting uh, for the Easter. Anyone want to tell me, the young ones, why 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 people maybe share eggs at Easter? Yeah. Kindness. Okay. Yeah. Not sure yet, yeah, Keisha? Symbol of new life, yeah. I think that's all good. Well, thank you for those answers. That's great. I think the one, the one I was looking for is the symbol of new life. New life. And hopefully you should be able to see straight away the idea of new life. You get new life in an egg and you get new life when Jesus comes back to life. So there's a new life there. And I'm going to talk a little bit about this short passage, just a few things we see in it. Um, and about what happened on that first Easter Sunday. This amazing scene at the tomb which unfolds. But in order to do that, we're going to have a few visual images up. These are the visual images which came during the notices. We're not meant to be in the notices, all right. So, I want you to tell me what you see. What do you see? Young ones, what do you see there? Yeah? Brilliant! A bear! I like, the I like the specifics there. A bear and a dog working together to get the present. Anyone else see? What does anyone else see? Everyone else see like that? Yeah, at the back, yeah. Yeah. A bear and a hamster! Wow! Gets more and more. We've got a whole zoo there in this one picture. Alright. Does anyone see anything different? Does anyone see past that? Yeah, David? Not sure, okay. Ah, here we go, Chantal's got it, yeah. It's not actually, I mean, it would be very impressive if these were two real animals doing that, but um, it's not actually two animals, it's just one dog in a costume. You see that? Yeah? So it's these people, I used a similar image about five years ago, so you've got no excuse. All right. Well, that was a long time ago. So it's actually a costume that makes it look like there's two bears. A, two, a bear, a dog, or a hamster carrying a present. But actually, it's just one. One dog wearing a costume. It's a bit of an illusion. It's a trick. It's something you can. It's the same thing. Everyone sees it, but they see different things. Second one. Do you want to tell me what they see when they see this one? What do people see when they see this one? Yeah. Ellie, relax. A sculpture. Yeah, a few different sculptures. Yeah, brilliant. So you can see kind of unusually shaped sculptures there on the screen. Yeah? I see some columns from the Colosseum. Yeah, some columns from the Colosseum. It's very much that style. Yeah? Yeah? Either of you. Both of you. Ah, brilliant, brilliant. You see a man and a woman. Does anyone else see the man and the woman? Can anyone see? Can anyone see? Actually, it's not another one. Can anyone see? Shh. Can anyone see two pairs of women having a conversation with each other? Yeah. It's the black shape. Yeah. Okay. 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 Good. Good. So again, again, we all see. We're all looking at the same thing, but. How we respond and what we see is slightly different. Last one. Okay. What do people see? Let's have a few adults. Let's have, let's have a few. Let's have enough. one or two adult answers as well. What do people see? Okay, Linda. Yeah, okay. 
So does anyone see that? So Linda can see a man with a beard. Can anyone see a man with a beard? On the right. A man with a beard on the right. His, his mouth is kind of lost. Alright. What do you want to see? Yeah. So you see the man on the left? With the hair on his head? Yeah, it's flipped around. So, so it's again the same thing. So actually, each way you look at it, it's a man. So some people can see the man on the left, who's, who's, got, no, who's got no beard and moustache, but he's got hair on his head. And others can see the man on the right, who's bald, but has got a beard and moustache. And it's just the same image, just flipped either way. So here's the important thing. Why am I showing you all these things? They're all very entertaining, they're all very fun. But what's the point of it? The point is everyone is looking at the same thing. Everyone is looking at the same thing, but what they see and how they relate to it is different. It's the same thing, it's the same image, but how people relate to it, what it means to them, is different. We're going to think about that just quickly as we go through the, the, the Easter story today. We've got this amazing, I'm going to refer briefly to, to Matthew 28, I'm just going to make three points from it quite quickly. Um, when people, the way people respond to Jesus' resurrection is different. It's the same event. It's the same thing, just like these are the same images. The way people responded and the way people, people uh, what happens to people in response to it is different. I'm going to talk about three different ways, three different responses that we can have as followers of Jesus from this passage. Three different responses from looking at the resurrection, looking at the empty tomb, and seeing what it means for us. First of all, Jesus being risen means joy. Joy. Where do I find joy? I don't know if anyone's got their Bible open. Can anyone find me joy in, in Matthew 28? Because there's a lot of kind of what's happened, and there's a lot of freer. Can anyone find me joy? Yeah, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Verse 8, after they get to the tomb, and after they see the angel, and after the angel speaks to them and says that Jesus is risen, the woman, the women, the first people to see, to see the empty tomb, the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy. They were afraid, and at the same time, they were filled with joy. Now, in the moment, you can imagine, these are the friends of Jesus, and they've seen him die, and they've been very upset. And um, when they get to the tomb, and there's an angel there, and the tomb's empty, Jesus is nowhere to be seen. You can imagine just the feeling of maybe it's happened. It's happened, it's really happened. What he said he was going to do, he's done. And suddenly joy rises in them. Now, in that moment, probably their joy was just based around the fact that their friend and their master, Jesus, was alive again. That was probably where their joy came from. But actually, it goes beyond that for us as followers of Jesus, because when Jesus rose from the dead, it means mission accomplished. It means all of what he said he was going to do. Living the life we should have lived, dying the death in our place for our sins, and rising again to, to everlasting life. It means all of what he said he was going to do, he did. All of the claims he made are absolutely true. And so when he says we can believe in him and have eternal life and have and be born again and have the forgiveness of our sins, it's all true. So they have joy. They can have joy initially. The second thing we see is Jesus being risen means worship. Jesus, Jesus being risen means worship. Can anyone find me worship in the passage? Young or old alike, can anyone find me worship in the passage? Has anyone got it? Verse 9. This is what it says in verse 9. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. So the angel has said, has spoke to them, saying, Jesus is risen. But then unexpectedly, as the women hurry away, Jesus himself makes an appearance. 
And suddenly he's there. Greetings, he said. Greetings. And their response is this. They came to him prostitute and worshipped him. In all their excitement, in all their joy, in all the what is going on, they know to worship Jesus. In the Bible, we are not to worship anyone or anything other than God. And so when they worship Jesus Christ, the man who is God, they've recognised that this is God come to earth as a man to live, to die, and to rise again. And that's who we worship. We worship Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And God the Son became a man and will forever be a human being. He will forever stand in that place of being the go-between between us and God. He is there for all time and we worship him. He is God, he is man, he is the God-man. Thirdly, Jesus being risen means stuff to do. Can anyone find me some stuff to do in this passage? Things to do if you like. Yeah, Jane's got it. So one of the things from uh, one of the things from from Jesus when they meet Jesus, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Anything else they're told to do? Yeah. Say again. There was a violent earthquake for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, sat on the tomb, rolled back the stone, and sat on it. That one? Or? Verse 10. <coughs> come and see the place where he lay. Yeah. So, so the angel says, Come and see the place where he lay. Then the angel says, Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He is risen from the dead, he's going out of you into Galilee. There you will see him. And then a few moments later, Jesus himself turns up. And reiterates the same thing. He's alive. Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. What's the significance of picking up on this? Well, it could have just noticed it's not just a case of Jesus is risen. Well, that's nice. Let's go home and have tea. These were the followers of Jesus Christ while he was there on earth. And now he's risen. They continue to be his followers. Now he is risen, there is stuff to do. Now, the, now he is risen, it's on to the next chapter. And right from the off, the angel of Jesus said, go to Galilee. You know, next phase is going to start with Galilee. So that's for us. We can be joyful. Jesus has accomplished everything, everything needed for us to be saved. We can be worshipful of him and recognise who he is. He is God, he is man, he is God-man, the God-man. And we can worship him. And we recognise as well that just as he had disciples who did stuff for him, who served him, who followed him then, straight away, immediately, we can see this is just the next phase. Go to Galilee. And then the story continues. It's the same for us today if we're followers of Jesus. Then we follow him now. He is with us now. We can trust him. And there may be, uh, maybe that's a message really for those who are following Jesus Christ today. But it might well be that there is someone here today who has not yet made the decision to put their trust in Jesus and to follow Jesus for themselves. And maybe if that's you, then your stuff to do is literally to do that. Before it comes to... You, we are followers. But first of all, come. Jesus is risen. Jesus is alive. Jesus has lived the life you should have lived. He has died the death you should have died. And now he is raised to life to give you the eternal life that he himself has. <coughs> If, that's, if there is someone here today who has not yet taken that step of trusting Jesus, of calling upon his name, of taking to yourself everything he has done for you, then the invitation today is come. The invitation today 
is come to Jesus. It has all been done. He wants you as his follower. He wants you as his friend. He wants you for himself. And he will save you if you come to him today. Let's pray. Father, we, uh, we thank you. The good news of Jesus Christ is that Jesus is risen. We thank you, Lord God, that his invitation is for all people. And I pray, Father, that, Lord, if there is anyone here today who is on the edge of that commitment or thinking about making that commitment, that they would just see and hear and understand the wondrous, wondrous Jesus and how much he loves them, that they may be yours forever and ever through coming and saying yes to him. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.